Sabah, part of the third largest island in the world. This remarkable part of Malaysian Borneo is a wild place where ancient forests still remain, where delicate ferns, tangling lianas, carnivorous pitcher plants all live side by side and are home to alien-like insect species, amphibians, and gregarious primates. Here, hidden amongst these rainforests of Borneo, one of the largest mammals on Earth finds home in this seemingly harmonious and safe environment. The Bornean Elephant. Recent DNA evidence indicates that the Bornean elephant is genetically distinct from other Asian elephants. Their population is almost entirely restricted to Sabah, where tightly knit bonds are formed between females and their offspring. When young male elephants reach adolescence, they will leave the herd to wander through the rainforests as lone bulls in search of food, water, and eventually returning to herds to mate. With a total population estimated below 1,500 individuals, Bornean elephants are an endangered species and a treasured part of Sabah's natural heritage. Undisturbed, the Bornean elephant is a more gentle-natured animal than other Asian elephants. Scientists have observed elephants displaying complex emotions such as grief, compassion, altruism, and play. Their highly developed brain is the largest among all terrestrial mammals. It's three to four times bigger than that of a human and explains in part their highly developed memory. Sabah is one of the last strongholds for these elephants. They have roamed these forests for thousands of years and have passed on their traditional knowledge from generation to generation, walking the same trails as their ancestors did before them in search of food, water, and refuge. These gentle giants are an example of how an animal and its surrounding environment can exist in an intricate balance with all living things. This is Mother Nature at her best. Unfortunately, as with the majority of all natural environments and their inhabitants around the world, the forests of Borneo and their wildlife are declining. They face a constant barrage of threats from human activities, which impacts and threaten their very existence and this natural balance of the ecosystem. Here in Sabah, this hugely biodiverse and beautiful environment has a remarkable approach to the coexistence of all its living things. Local communities, NGOs, corporations and individuals have developed a distinctive, cohesive approach to conservation and sustainable development. 
they found a way to protect these forests and wildlife while simultaneously producing crops and restoring degraded areas. This is the Living Landscapes Approach. The Living Landscapes Approach acknowledges the role and importance of four elements within the ecosystem. Forests, wildlife, communities, and human land use, and recognizes their interplay and impact on the wider ecosystem. Balancing the needs of these four elements with the need for conservation and sustainable development is at the heart of the success of the Living Landscapes Approach in Sabah. Borneo has some of the most charismatic, weird, and wonderfully biodiverse wildlife on the planet. It's also home to lush tropical rainforests that support a rich mixture of microbe, plant, and animal species which interact through a web of life to establish ecological balance and harmony. Trees play a huge part in this. They do something amazing. Besides providing an intricate habitat of food and shelter for countless forest animals, they also photosynthesize, producing oxygen and absorbing carbon dioxide, which is key in mitigating climate change. Trees absorb this carbon dioxide, storing it in their leaves, trunks, and soil. Globally, forests absorb approximately 8 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide every year. Trees are therefore known as carbon sinks and are critical to the control and stabilization of our climate, not only for the future of wildlife that call them home, but ultimately for the survival of the entire human species. Danum Valley Conservation Area on Sabah's east coast, covering 438 square kilometers of relatively undisturbed lowland dipterocarp forest is one such forest. The forest itself and all the rich biodiversity inside possesses protection from the Sabah government to any human development. But these untouched, pristine forests are not the norm. The Living Landscapes approach also acknowledges the need for sustainable human development and economic growth of individuals and communities living within this landscape. For generations, indigenous peoples and local communities around the world have cared for much of the world's most valuable forests, grasslands, savannas, wetlands, and oceans, including wildlife. They have been the guardians of nature. Many of these areas now face destructive development while indigenous cultures and traditions are also under threat. We have much to learn from the unique knowledge, skills, and values of indigenous peoples and local communities, as well as how they integrate conservation within their cultural and spiritual traditions. Within this living landscapes approach, it has been understood that the human species is also a part of the surrounding environment. Therefore, local communities and their livelihoods need to be protected too and allowed to thrive alongside the surrounding forest and its wildlife.
This is also true of the larger scale land users such as the timber and palm oil industry. Sustainable palm oil, managed forestry and the timber industry is one way communities and corporations can enjoy economic growth whilst being mindful of the other factors in the ecosystem. Forest management and exploitation is here to stay in some form or other, as is the oil palm industry and timber plantations, but it is up to governments and large corporations to make these industries sustainable and work with the natural environment for the benefit of all, not just for our own human interests, but also for the entire living landscape. This is where the jurisdictional approach comes in. Sabah uses this approach across the living landscapes to have a bigger perspective on conservation and development and make sure policies and standards around development and agriculture are designed to support and achieve a high level of government involvement. This jurisdictional approach complements and is integrated into the living landscapes approach seamlessly. It's a collaboration which aims to reconcile competing social, economic and environmental objectives through participation by a full range of stakeholders across sectors implemented with a form of government involvement. Borneo's elephants are an icon of this living landscape's approach. They walk those ancient roots of their ancestors, traveling through all these four elements with no regard for human designated boundaries or territories. The elephant's footsteps, as well as our own, have impacts across each of these four aspects. We must acknowledge understand and resolve these negative effects posed to the living ecosystem as a way to ensure its balance and harmony into the future. For the Bornean elephant, the forest habitat is the key to its own survival. The forest is the elephant's home and though their roots may not have changed for generations, the forests themselves, through human impact, have. Through logging activities, unsustainable land clearing, and ever-expanding agriculture, these native forest homes of these elephants have changed and been dramatically reduced. The effects of this deforestation leave isolated pockets of forests, surrounded by human developments such as settlements, electric fences, or plantations. The elephant's ancestral trails are fractured and broken, meaning they must travel further and navigate this new habitat for food and shelter. The protection of these remaining forests is vitally important, not just for these elephants and other animals, but for the survival of our planet. Yet, conflict and struggle arises here between protection of the natural habitat and the need for economic growth. There is an urgent need to connect these key forests together, to enable wildlife movement for foraging, as well as to move to areas of higher elevation in the event 
of climate change. While the elephants have sometimes found ways to adapt to man-made developments and barriers, and still traverse between their forest home ranges, this is far from ideal and does not come without its own set of unique problems. Other smaller and more fragile animal species, however, have not been so resilient to the limitations imposed upon them. People are expanding their living spaces as well as their agricultural and farming land. These elephants and other animals don't know where the human boundaries and perimeter lines lie. They only know the ancient routes their ancestors took and their quest for food, water, and refuge. The Bornean elephant herd's journey will often take them to the edge of these fragmented forests, stumbling upon a different kind of flora, one which is ordered and easy to find. Fruit trees such as banana, coconut, jackfruit, tapioca, young saplings and palms are all delicious, new and easily available delicacies for the elephant and her family. This is also unfortunately the source of livelihood for some of these communities. Elephants find themselves forced out of their traditional forest home and unknowingly damage the very thing humans seek to protect. Damage to property and agricultural crops can be costly. However, when elephants enter community small-scale farmland or villages, these elephants pose a more crucial threat. Hey, hey! A herd of elephants can do massive amounts of destruction in a small amount of time. The loss and damage to crops is felt more deeply when it is to small-scale communities and the threat to their lives and livelihoods is very real. When your entire population is under 1,500, these avoidable damages and deaths are hard-hitting and have a dramatic impact on the species' fight against extinction. Under this living landscape's approach, there are three pillars to focus redressing the balance to the ecosystem. Protect, produce, and restore. Protect points towards the protection efforts of Sabah's forest and wildlife, which includes the Bornean elephants. Practicing sustainable palm oil and timber production falls under the produce pillar, while restore is the restoration of degraded habitats and ecological corridors. The living landscapes approach is supported by the understanding that it is possible for humans, wildlife, environment, and industry to live in harmony with a few strategies and adjustment for all. In Sukau, the community problems that arise from the human-wildlife conflict are addressed and resolved through careful, thought-out, and planned actions. Here, Farina, the elephant whisperer, 
seeks to educate and empower people to understand these elephants. People and um, wildlife, especially the elephants, they are we are fighting for the same resources. You know, like we need access to food, we need access to water. So um, this is where conflicts happen. The Seratu Atai Initiative was set up to encourage the coexistence of communities and animals living in the Kinabatangan. Saya suka tanam sayur juga banyak sayur pisang apa semua tapi oleh karena sekarang saya tidak menanam sebab di gajah selalu datang makan habislah dia injak-injak semua kebun rumah-rumah kebun pisang habis ada dua hikar lebih lah pisang habis hanya yang tinggal berapa pokok saja bila itu gajah datang di mengacau kebun kami ataupun dekat rumah kami kami menggunakan tuladum menggunakan ladum itu menghalau sama dia dengan bunyinya. Woi, lari gajah sudah. Seratu Atai, uh, one of our mission is actually try to uh, find the best solution with uh, the local communities together. So uh, we come and then we try to um, understand the barrier and the challenges by the local communities and together we figure out what's the best uh, solution uh, because there is no one solution fits for all situations. Farina has brought a sense of understanding to the community so they will buy into the concept of how to deal with these animals they see as destructive pests. One of the best kind of mitigation method that we see work the best right now is having a local communities uh, elephant ranger team. Dulu memang takutlah sebab tiada apa-apa kan macam kosong lah. Uh, kalau sekarang ni okey lah, boleh lah, <laughs> boleh sedap lah berdepan-depan dengan gajah ni. Cuma macam mana cara mau uh, berdepan dengan gajah? kawal dia apa semua. Jadi boleh faham sudah gajah ni mau ini, oh dia begini nih, dia mau menyerang. Kita kena larilah begitu. This has been done practically through the realigning of fences acting as a physical barrier to protect the communities and their crops. Uh, untuk persempadanan yang pada masa yang idea yang melalui hutan sendiri, sebenarnya kita hari ini kita bekerja dengan ladang supaya melihat yang sebenarnya electric fence cara pemasangan yang betul supaya gajah tadi boleh mengikut laluan yang betul. Suka uh, jarang sedahlah sebab ada tu pagar bensin tu kan, dia orang pasang sudah separuh. Jadi gajah pun susah sudah mohon lah. Masuk ada laju tu yang uh, gajah yang memang biasa sudah dengan itu elektrik. Nah, itu yang jenis gajah yang kebal lah. Shifting the community mindset to see the elephants as a benefit to ecotourism is also an important move and is in line with the protect and produce pillars of the living landscapes approach. Sebelum adanya yang ini anak-anak pokok yang ada di sini sebenarnya dia bermula daripada pengusaha-pengusaha ibu-ibu yang tertentu housewife yang mengendali nursery tersebut dan bila dia cukup matang kita ambil bayar dengan harga yang baik dan seterusnya dibawa di sini untuk disemai. Once people and communities can make this transition to seeing ecotourism as a viable and sustainable livelihood, they can shift their mindset to attach value to protecting these elephants and other wildlife to support this livelihood and start seeing themselves as guardians and stewards of nature. Bila ada gajah di kampung ini, lebih 100 bot ada di sungai. Dan semuanya bukan saja homestay, tapi yang botmen botmen pun yang lokal punya adalah masyarakat kampung itu sendiri. Apatah lagi guide dia. Jadi yang yang dapat benefit secara langsung pengusaha homestay, pemandu pemandu bot pelancong yang lokal di situ. Their actions and choices play a part in protecting and conserving this biodiversity. The Bornean elephant herd has stumbled upon Sabah Softwood's Burhat, who take a very different approach to these elephant visitors. 
Also known as SSB, Sabah Softwoods Berhad have constructed a model to alleviate human wildlife conflict that has exacerbated in recent years. SSB's Brumas Estate, which is straddled between two forest reserves, comprises industrial tree plantations, oil palm plantations, conservation areas, and a wildlife corridor. It is this wildlife corridor, connecting a fragmented forest to a larger forest block, which is so exciting and seeks to foster human-elephant coexistence. Since 1981, uh, Sabah and, and WWF Malaysia have been working on wildlife assessment in tree plantations. In 2012, the two organizations have been working closely to manage human elephant coexistence, both to reduce crop damages from elephants and to reduce inherent risks that resulted elephants roaming around in our plantations. Their strategy is not to fence off the elephants completely, but to allow the elephants to use certain parts of their plantation where crop damage is negligible. By only fencing off young oil palm trees and settlements, this allows the elephants to use other areas, thus offering a coexistence model for the elephants and the plantation. Dr. Cheryl, a WWF elephant expert, with the help of Sabah Wildlife Department, have collared numerous elephants over the years. Collaring an elephant is crucial, as it would give conservationists access to vital data on the elephant's movements and requirements. This, in turn, can help in land use planning, which will inform plantation owners on where to place their electric fences and where to remove bottlenecks. Plantation companies in the agriculture industry actually play a very crucial role to um, help to manage human-elephant conflict by um, supporting or collaborating with uh, us, for example, the NGOs, uh, to coordinate electric fencing uh, between all these neighbouring plantations to help to uh, reduce human-elephant conflict. Under the produce pillar of this approach, Sabah Softwoods Berhad are also producing sustainable palm oil. At present, they are Malaysian Sustainable Palm Oil Certified, or MSPO. Other than MSPO, Sabah's palm oil production is also striving to being Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil Certified, or RSPO. This would hold them to a global standard of sustainable palm oil. With the support of the jurisdictional approach, palm oil plantations in Sabah can be certified to best practices. This helps to regulate and make sure there is no deforestation as well as no exploitation of the land, animals or people. Although set up for elephants, the corridor now serves multiple other species, such as orangutan, sambar deer, clouded leopard, various bird species, and sun bears. We can see these elephants traveling down the corridor, which has become a metaphor for this living landscapes approach, as this wildlife corridor upholds the three pillars which support this unique approach. The plantation is producing oil palm and timber. The corridor is protecting elephants and other wildlife whilst restoring the forest habitat. The preservation of untouched primary forests around the globe is essential for the survival of our planet's interconnected living ecosystem and all the flora and fauna they support. 
On the other hand, carefully managed and sustainably harvested natural forests can, in some circumstances, increase biodiversity and the overall health of the forest to the benefit of all. Here in Daramakot, they found a model to demonstrate their best forest management practices. Of the 56,000 hectares of mixed dipterocarp forests, 42,077% is set aside for log production and managed logging, 13,023% for conservation and the remaining 20 hectares, 0.03%, for community forestry. Duramakot produces sustainable timber whilst protecting vital fragile areas of the forest too. The harvested logs are based on reduced impact logging where only trees having minimal impact to the soil and forests are removed. Uh, we enrich approximately 1,100 hectares of uh, fully stocked forest and uh, silviculture treated 26,000 hectares of uh, forest, restore, restored totally graded forests of uh, 400 hectares approximately. Now, now what is interesting about the uh, 400 hectares of uh, restoration towards the uh, totally degraded forest that's to the uh, south of Dramagot and the, uh, the area looks good now. The wildlife starts coming back and um, all those things. Duramakot also restores their forest by planting native trees in the ongoing enhancement of the biodiversity of the forest. This forest is a productive and lucrative timber producer. The forest generates an annual income of about 10 million ringgit to 15 million ringgit from its timber alongside being a biodiverse and protected wild forest open for ecotourism. Sabah has worked extremely hard to re-establish a great working balance between our human need for economic growth and the need to protect the forest environment and its flora and fauna. Through careful management, conservation doesn't need to be at the cost of economic development. The two can coexist in a sustainable manner that benefits all four elements within the ecosystem. Forests, wildlife, community, and human land use. The living landscapes approach paired with the jurisdictional approach is one possible solution to how humans can address their mistakes as custodians of this natural world and do better to maintain a harmonious environment. In line with the protect, produce and restore pillars, the Sabah government has committed that by 2025 50% of its land area will remain under forest cover, of which 30% of them will be under totally protected areas and for palm oil production to be 100% MSPO and RSPO certified. Although this unique approach is a great start at redressing the balance, the journey ahead will be challenging. There is still much to do, both in the short and long term, to maintain the delicate balance that has been established here. This journey is also ours as a collective. We need to acknowledge our own individual role and responsibility in protecting the ecosystem. By making thoughtful choices such as sourcing sustainable RSPO palm oil and FSC certified goods, we can support the living landscapes approach and protect our Bornean elephants and other wildlife as well as the forests that they call home.
for now, our elephant and her herd can safely look to travel between her traditional forest home range with enough food and safety to ensure their survival well into the future.